Third and ten. It's only a three-man rush. Still pressure. Wentz just going to air it out. Going way deep down the field. He's got a touchdown to Sean Jackson. To 20 curls. Here's Wentz. Third and goal. Back to pass. Pressure. Rolls out. Throws in. It is caught. Touchdown. Al Sean Jeffrey. This is on third down. Four-man rush. Pressure comes. Wentz going to let it fly. He's got Jackson again. He's got it. Touchdown. How's it going, everyone? We are back. The Philly Experience Podcast. That's right. It is not the usual voice behind the host, Mike. Uh, this is Chris Thacker. I am in studio right now with Tyre Hood and Tanner Martin. Uh, we're, we're expecting Max. Uh, Max will be here soon, hopefully. Uh, so we're here. It's it's been it's, week one has passed us by in the NFL season. The Eagles have won against the Redskins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what's wrong? What's wrong? We won thirty two twenty seven. All right, cut the music. All right, just 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 cut the music. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I also want before you t- take the 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 steering wheel out of my hands. All right. Uh, we got week two coming up against the Atlanta Falcons. We'll mm. get into that. And I'm pretty sure that's pretty much going to take up the whole show. T, do you have something that you want to present to the, the show? Oh, yeah. I got to get this off my chest. What's wrong? All right. Now, before we get, you know, get start celebrating this wonderful victory and everybody starts singing Kumbaya <laughs> and everybody starts being like, oh, Wentz, 2019 MVP. The Eagles are going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, before we get into all that, I need at least 10 to 15 minutes to get this off my chest. Let's all right. It, T. All, all right. right. Action. All right. Look, I'm, what I seen Sunday was a little bit different from what everybody else, especially in that first half. So about the first for the first 10, 15 minutes of the show, I'm going to talk about this sorry excuse for an 11 personnel that we call a defense right about I now. I am pissed Oh, off. boy. <laughs> all right. You're not confident in our defense, T? Not at all. Why is that? First off, in the first half, first off, the overall stats. All right. We made Case Keenum look like a Hall of Fame quarterback out there. All right. And then on top of that, the first touchdown that they scored to Vernon Davis. Are you flipping kidding me? All right. That was a crazy. Play. A simple out route. All right. Sendejo trips. Fine. I can get over that. But he recovered. Had the ability to make the tackle. Not only did Vernon Davis, who's older than Jesus, the Bible, and dirt, was able to <laughs> hurdle over Ronald Darby. He made Ronnie McLeod eat air. And then Sendejo still, after the recovery, missed the tackle. And then nobody caught in old Vernon Davis. Are you kidding me you see, right now? You yeah, see, that was T, a crazy play. When, you, when you're that old, you experience a lot of things. And, uh, you know, you kind of develop this ability to just dodge and weave. And I'm not finished. Oh, boy. All right. You allow two, not just one, but two Deep receptions to the same doggone receiver on the same doggone side against the same doggone player in Russell Douglas. Where the hell was Sidney Jones? <laughs> All right. I'm sick of this defense. It's only week one, just, T. Just to clear it up, T, just to show you how good Case Keenum was yesterday or on Sunday. He was 30 for 44. 380 yards and three passing touchdowns. It's an outrage. Now, is that Case we did Keenum get being, to him once. Is that Case Keenum being good? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, Tanner, I need you to calm down there. All right. Uh, no, is that Case Keenum being good or is that our Eagles defense being bad? No, that's our defense yeah. being bad. We're supposed to have this dominant front four. The main purpose of this defense is to get pressure and hit the quarterback. Well, doggone it, we failed at that miserably. Only getting to him one good time. I'm not finished neither. Oh, I'm not finished. Oh, boy. Oh, this is just the beginning. Oh, I'm ripping this defense apart. So then finally, when Sidney Jones does start playing and get into the game, now all of a sudden the defense looks dominant. The offense starts coming back. All right, now everybody's good. Everybody's cheering. There's no more boot birds. Everybody's excited. And then, on top of that, it looks like the Eagles are going to cover the spread. What happens? What does Jim Sports employ? That stupid, doggone prevent defense. All right? He allowed the Washington Redskins to march down the field bit by piece. P 
piece by painful piece until eventually they scored a touchdown and destroyed the spread. Are you kidding me right now? Jeez, T, take it down or not? I will not. <laughs> so now I do you want... Pissed Do you off. want to talk about how the Eagles couldn't stop a fourth and fifteen at the end of the game? Oh, the that prevent defense. Oh, was that what it was? <laughs> oh my goodness! How do you not stop a fourth and fifteen against the Redskins? Against the stinking Redskins! Seriously, that's it. I'm done. <clears throat> I'm calling for Jim Schwartz's head. I don't care that it's week one. Hey. I'm sick of this scheme. The scheme doesn't stink and work. You got these receivers playing 10 to 15 yards off the ball. That dog won't prevent defense does not work. We it's easily exposed. Please, for the love of everything, please just stop with the prevent defense. Tell your corners to press up. Please. I am begging you. Uh, T? 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 Uh. Buddy? Are you okay over there? I am not. Hey, at least you won in fantasy this week. Uh, yeah, 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 whatever. Who, who'd you beat this week? <laughs> um, Shut up. All right. <laughs> Chris Thacker. <laughs> not only did I beat him, I blew him out. Okay. <laughs> Everyone, I have, a, I, 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 have, I have something to tell you all. This is a perfect example of why you need to have confidence in yourself and not to be swayed by others. <laughs> I have like four people and their mothers going, Sammy Watkins, why would you pick Sammy Watkins? Mm. And and two hours before uh, before one o'clock, I go, okay, maybe because maybe I am wrong because I, I when it comes to football, I am certainly not the brightest star in the sky. So I'm like, all right, fine, I'll put it, I'll take out Sammy Watkins, and I'll put in Darius Dice. I know it's Darius Geis. <sighs> And, uh, yeah, that was a huge mistake. Uh, but then again, if you played D-Jax, you would have beat me anyway. Yeah, pretty um, much. But, anyway, about this football game that we watched, week one against the Redskins. All right, that's good. All right. All right. All right. I, I Do you want to talk about the positives? Yeah, I, yeah, I got that out. Okay. Whew. All right. How about Deshaun Jackson? <laughs> all right. Now, we've all said that, you know, I've, all, I've said from the beginning that I thought that the Sean Jackson pickup was going to be an underrated move, and everybody was poo-pooing it. Everybody kept saying, well, Deshaun Jackson, you know, he lost the step, this, that, the third, and the other. Well, Deshaun Jackson burned him twice. Oh, man. Two times. And the whole time in the first half, I'm like, dude, why isn't Wentz doing the one thing that he said he was going to do? throw it 70 yards to Deshaun. Why, why wasn't Doug Peterson listening to him in the first half? Like, all, that's all he wants to do. <laughs> That's all we wanted to see as the people. I'm just saying. People what they want to see. I agree, yeah. Carson. <laughs> but I'm just hey, saying. hey, they eventually got into that. They didn't want to do it first play of the game. They didn't want to pull no McNabb T.O. stuff. I, I wanted them to pull a McNabb T.O. Oh, so did I, but I kind of had a feeling they weren't. Yeah, so, they they, hey, they eventually went into the trick trick hat and, yeah, and went went deep. Yeah, finally. Oh, man. That was, what a breath of fresh air. Because Deshaun clearly adds a, a factor to this offense that we definitely have not had. Oh, easily. Last year, and especially the Super Bowl winning year. He de With him being a deep threat, it does really open up the field, it seems like. And Wentz kind of looks like himself from 2017 right. again. I'll mm -hmm. tell you what. It was great to see him moving around in the pocket and, and launching that ball. He threw for 313 yards, mm -hmm. 28 for 39. He's got three touchdowns. Yep. I mean, he's on he's on a roll right now. Yeah, it's week is. one, but it's really great to see him airing out that ball. Right, especially considering the fact that, you know, he didn't play in the preseason, so we really didn't get to see him you know, an action, an actual live football action. So it was a breath of fresh air to see that and them come out in the second half and, you know, come out with that energy. Um, uh, not to be a negative Nancy again, but I'm looking at the running no back. I, I'm looking at the running back situation and I'm, I'm a little confused. I, all right? I, I wanted to bring that up next. All right. I'm a little, I'm a little befuddled. Okay. All right. So um, I'm expecting Jordan Howard to be the bell cow back, correct? I mean, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I was, like, yeah, that I was, was kind of expecting. It, it, it's it was the expectation that was set uh, in the off season, right? Like that was my expectation was for you know him to be the bell cow back. But then I'm seeing Darren Sproles getting all these touches, and I'm yeah. like, why? You knew this was going to be a, a three headed monster in a way at running back because you knew we were going to use Sproles on third down sometimes, and we were going to use Miles Sanders more than that, yeah. and Jordan Howard the most. That is that is correct, but why? But why are we using Darren Sproles more than any other running back, especially on running situations? Like there was a running situation on third down where they put Darren Sproles in the game. I think it was like third and two, and they put Darren Sproles in the game. And I'm like, well, they they kind of like you can like 
Let's try to you trick him up a little bit. You know what's going on. Right. right. You kind of know what's going on. Let's try to trick him up a little bit. If you put Jordan Howard out there, they're going to think you're going to run. You pull out for a play-action pass. Boom, you got him. Because they're thinking, okay, they only got two yards. They're going to put their big power back in. Like, it's things like that. You pull out Darren Sproles. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm not, I'm not really. I kind of know what you're doing. Like, that, like, it's things like that. The personnel. And then, like I said, I think Darren Sproles got a little too, little too many touches this right. week. He had, he had nine Miles Sanders had 11. Um, yeah, Miles Sanders had 11, and Jordan Howard only had six. Which is kind of redonkulous to me. But, like, T, like I think... I'm looking at, like, I'm looking at um, how many snaps um, each player had. So, Miles Sanders had 36. Darren Sproles had 23. And um, and Jordan. Jordan Howard only had 17 snaps. Right. Which is... Like, and Jordan Howard, honestly, if you look at it from the eye test, he was the best runner. Like, seriously. He was the, he was the best runner out there. Like, he was the one pushing Powell's for seven, eight yards. And I'm like, why are we not playing Jordan Howard? I don't understand that. Yeah, he well, he I, averaged seven yards a carry. I, I I honestly think the reason Doug Peterson went with uh, Darren Sproles a lot is because he Darren Sproles does carry this pedigree with him. Because he is he, he is a veteran. You know, I, I think it's just this mindset of, oh, if I put the veteran out there, he'll know what to do. I, and I, under, and, and, I understand that, but you also have to go with the hot hand. And, I mean, this is just me speculating, but I'm sure Doug Peterson has set running plays for each running back, as in, like, I, I, I'm not going to run this certain play with Jordan ha- Howard. I'll put Darren Sproles in for that. Because, you know, they each have their strengths and weaknesses. Okay. So, I... I I mean, I, I I was thinking the same exact thing. I was like, man, I'm seeing a lot of Darren Sproles. Like, what's going on here? Exactly. I'm sick of it. Like, even though even though uh, Miles Sanders only averaged 2.3 yards carry, I still liked what I saw out of him. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. I like what I seen out of him, but I think he got more snaps than honestly I anticipated in a week one game. Big V took away his first <laughs> career rushing touchdown. Hey, listen, <laughs> I, I I seen Big V in person at a Chick Fil A down South Philly. All right, I'm not saying anything against that man anymore. All right, that is a grown man that you're talking about. I refuse to talk about anybody that's that doggone big. It's not going to happen. But anyway, yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah, Miles, yeah, Miles Sanders got a little bit more snaps than I honestly thought he would have. But I understand they're trying to make him the bell cow. But it also doesn't help the fact that before the game even started, like a couple of days prior to, like there was a rumor that went out that said that the Eagles were trying to trade for Melvin Gordon. And they were trying to trade away Jordan Howard and what, a fifth round pick for him? Mm-hmm. So it's things like that that kind of adds to the speculation as to why Jordan Howard isn't playing. Like I don't know what like I, I don't know what's going on at Novacare Complex with that situation with Jordan Howard, but I feel as though for right now, like you need to work who's whoever is the best player now, currently. Now I know this is just us speculating, but professional athletes do have big egos. Do you think he kind of took that personally in a way? If he I'm did, sure he did. If he did, he didn't. He didn't publicly talk about it like A. B. <clears throat> we'll talk about that later. Now, now he he <laughs> feels as if he has to prove himself a little more. Right, and that's and that's fine. Like, okay, these guys wanted to get rid of me so easily. Now I have to go and prove myself on the field. That's what he's thinking. That's and that's what. that's a good thing. But it's like you you go out and you trade for him as a team, but then at the same mouth you're talking about trading him. For a running back who you're going to have to pay at the end of the year. Like, either either running back, you're going to have to pay. Like, yeah. either you're going to pay Jordan Howard or you're going to pay Melvin Gordon because they're both in one-year contracts. You were going to pay somebody. So it didn't make any sense for them to, to go out for that trade. And then you just drafted Miles Sanders in the second round. so And you're obviously talking about him eventually being your feature back and your bell cow back. So why in the world are you trying to trade for Melvin Gordon? Besides, I, I did really like what I saw out Jordan Howard the couple times I saw him got the, get the ball. I forget who the color analyst was yesterday. Uh, doesn't really matter. but And I also didn't exactly watch the Chicago Bears a whole lot last year. Hmm. I heard a lot about Jordan Howard. I didn't really watch him that much. But he kind of described how he's got sort of a patience, not nearly on the level of like Le'Veon Bell, but I definitely saw that yesterday and I really like that because you know he didn't get a whole lot of carries but when he when he got the ball as you can tell with seven yards he produced he did and I definitely would like to see him more because I mean we've seen Darren Sproles Darren Sproles is good right but 
I feel like he's I, lost a step. Like he doesn't yeah. have that same speed. Yeah. And like you keep playing him like that, he's not gonna last throughout the entire season. Not like at I all. thought they primarily brought him back for punt returns. And they were gonna work, you know, the rest of the backs. But they didn't. Like they, they gave Darren Sproles like a good amount of the touches out there, and I'm just like, for what? Like for real, for real, I would just primarily use him on punt returns every once in a while. I might put him out there on the field, but I'm not gonna utilize him like a regular feature back. Like that, like that's my whole thing. Like that's that's the part I I really don't fully understand. Yeah. Like, go ahead, Tanner. You look like that's something. Well, I was just adding on to what Chris said. Um, the talking about who was talking about the game. Charles Davis and Kevin Burkhart. Did oh, hold a great on, job. hold on, hold on. We got breaking news, people. We got breaking news we- coming in late as usual. Dog on it, Max James. Everybody, give him a hand. <laughs> give him a hand. <laughs> Oh, okay. Everybody calm down. Everybody calm down. <laughs> okay, okay. Max James, welcome to the studio. Uh, we, 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 uh, we, we are dissecting this uh, football game that transpired between the Philadelphia Eagles and the I Washington like it, Redskins. Like and you just missed the legendary you, rant. You missed a great rant from T. But Start the show. Oh, oh yeah. We yeah. started a while ago. Uh, <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> okay, okay, let's go. Okay, let's get back. You were right, let's get back I was talking about how great Charles Davis and Kevin Burkhart did talking about the game, and I much rather would have heard them That's than who it was. if I was watching the Cowboys game with um, it was Joe Buck and Joe Troy. Buck. Did, did I a, not say that? That's was a, it both of them? It was both of them, yeah, right? And that, they're, that's they're a like, terrible idea to have them talking about the Cowboys oh my game. Gosh. And see, and that's the thing. That's I like about my analysts. I like the fact when they're able to break down what personnel is out there, you know, what's going to happen, things like that. You know, nuances of the game. And they're talking about the action actual game not just right talking about the cowboys right <laughs> like actual nuances of the game that's going on throughout the game like okay one thing that they talked about huge and i'm going to talk about it now is the fact that the eagles employed a lot of heavy 12 personnel that's one back two tight ends sometimes they used you know the power structure where they had a tight end on each side sometimes a tight end was lined up so I saw, sometimes both the tight ends got her nerds were lined up on the weak side or the strong side. Sometimes they were out wide with Deshaun Jackson out there and Alshon Jeffrey. And that's the thing, and that's the personnel I think that's going to be the staple of the Eagles offense this year because it's going to cause a lot of mismatches, all depending on what defense the personnel comes out in. They come out in that nickel, okay, I can gash you with the run because you don't necessarily have the power guys to stop the run. If you come out in your base package, then I can take you over the top because you don't have the speed to compete with my speed. I like to Sean Jackson, Zach Kurtz, Dallas Goddard. Uh, but, Max, uh, I so we were discussing a little bit ago about how Darren Sproles got a whole lot of carries and they didn't. You know, Jordan Howard wasn't really utilized that much. What, what's your opinion on that? Well, listen, when Jordan Howard was out on the field, he performed well. Oh, I think he did. Uh, Sproles, uh, you know, Doug Peterson, the comfort factor there, but. See if you if you said that that Sproles shouldn't have gotten that many carries, I agree with you. Um, I, I don't know why he did. I guess I, I, when we were sitting here a couple weeks ago, I I personally said that I would just keep him. You know, maybe as a, a five to six touch per game. You know, you want to throw in some punt returns there. Um, you can do that. But I really thought Miles Sanders and Jordan Howard would have you know um, a tandem, and really it wasn't like that. I mean, Miles Sanders, what did he have? Forty eight percent of the carries. Uh, and, yeah. and Howard had about you know twenty five percent of the carries, so I was um, a little surprised from that standpoint. But um, one topic I did want to bring up to you guys is Wentz. Man, he looked rusty in the first half, probably because none of played in the preseason. But then mm-hmm. turns turns it on in the second half and you know puts on a big time performance. Yep. And but the, uh, and the defense looked like hot booty. Yeah. <laughs> Allowing an old thirty five year old man to run down the field. Look, man. When you don't play it on the preseason together, you expect stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but Rodney McLeod played in the preseason. Anderson Sedejo, I mean, Andrew Sedejo played in the preseason. The only person on that play that did not play in the preseason was Ronald Darby. And he got hurdled. Did Fletcher Cox play in the preseason? He did not. All right. Did Malik Jackson play in the preseason? He did. He did? Okay. Because we just lost him for, it's going to be what? Like, yeah, he's gonna, in a boot a while. right now. So Yeah, it's going to be a minute before he comes. All, they, all they're saying is that it's a significant injury. They're not disclosing exactly what it is, which is kind of concerning to me. All they're saying is it doesn't require surgery, and I'm like, eh. The one play that summed up the whole game for the defense is when Vernon Davis hurdled like three guys and then ran to the house for a touchdown. Yeah. I mean, I mean, who, who? I don't know if <laughs> Just... they were corners or something, but or, or linebackers. Man, I don't, I don't know who the specific players maybe, were. Maybe. I know exactly who they were. Oh, who were they? Oh, they, it was Rodney McLeod, Andrew Sendejo, and Ronald Darby. 
Okay, so three guys. He just he leaped over one and then just just like Ronnie McLeod ate asphalt and dirt yeah, on got the away. way to try to tackle. All right, he hurdled Ronald Darby yeah. and and Andrew Sandejo after stumbling trying to cover him recovered and then tried to tackle him and completely missed him. And Russell Douglas is slower than my grandmother. Well, listen, <laughs> <laughs> he. The, the cornerback situation from last year has carried over so far into week one it's this ridiculous. year. You know, I mean, they don't tackle. We were talking about this earlier. Sidney Jones, who wasn't involved in this play, is just another name to throw on the list of players that just don't tackle. They just want to hit the guy out oh, of bounds. piece of Swiss cheese. And guys like Vernon Davis, who've been playing in this league for, it feels like forever. Um, I, they, said they, he was they, old, I said he was older than Jesus, the Bible, yeah, and dirt. They, they anticipate that, and, you know, Stuff like that's going to happen, but yeah. uh, the thing that surprised me <coughs> also was low life. Case Keenum, man. He <laughs> what? He, he put up like uh, like close to forty fantasy points. He was throwing that's what deep I'm down. He was throwing deep balls down the field. Like this, put up points. This defense made him look like a Hall of Fame we, quarterback. Yeah, he's we, not that stinking good. We came. He's an the, average quarterback. We, he's not that stinking good. We we made, I agree. We came to the conclusion that Case Keenum didn't play well. Our defense just played bad. Yeah, just. What's he here for? Not just <laughs> now, but, another thing I wanted to discuss was the the passing game. You know, the the whole story with Carson last year before he uh, went down for the rest of the year was he just kept targeting Zach Ertz, which I, I've said this before. I felt like it made this offense a you know very one dimensional. You know, looking at the the stats, Deshaun got eight receptions, five to Ertz, five to Jeffrey. I mean, I know it's only one week. He's definitely also spreading the ball out more. Yards to Deshaun. Yeah, I know. He he did. He did. And uh, they had a couple good screenplays. You yeah. know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they sniffed yeah. out those screen plays. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I that is a, that's kind of a form of offense that really is, you know, become big in the NFL. It is. I, I really feel like so. I, I mean, still I still feel like Andy Reid is like the king of screens. Like for some reason, like his screens all the time work. I don't oh, know yeah. I don't know what I don't know how he's able to practice, you know, get them to practice that so well, and then you bring it to the game, and then it's like the screens just take the defense completely off guard. But Andy Reid is still the king of calling. Yeah, I wonder what plays. they put in the water out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll talk but, about that a little later. But you know, with Deshaun, I mean, we've already said this before. Deshaun in this offense really opens up this offense, yeah, and I, do. I think what after a shaky first half, Wentz really did display I, close to what 2017 Wentz was. Which was really refreshing. Mm-hmm. I'm just hoping he can keep it up. I think he will be able to keep it up because now, okay, now you got some game tape on these players. Now that okay, Deshaun Jackson is going to be the deep target. Oh no, we can't let Deshaun Jackson go deep. So now you're going to start seeing the safeties playing too high. Now you, that's going to open up the middle of the field. And ain't no linebacker can keep up with Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard. Ain't no linebacker. There were many slot corners that can keep up with Nelson Aguilar. And then on top of that, you're going to leave Alshon Jeffrey one on one. That's his game. Like this, this offense is just going to open up even more. It's going to be become even more dynamic as the weeks go on. And then on top of that, if you're able to balance the passing game with an even amount of good running game, that's just going to open it up even more. So this this Eagles offense is really going to be scary. They are going to be scary good. Do you think Deshaun's going to become Carson's new favorite target? Oh yeah, easily. Yeah. I mean, you, you heard what he just said. What he wants to do. Wentz, Wentz had what three to throwing. Touchdown yep. passes. Yep. Three, two, three. And, he, and he had two to who? Who had two? Was it just Deshaun. Al- Deshaun, Deshaun, Deshaun had two. And Alshon had one. Alshon had one. The, the other Alshon touchdown was uh, recorded as a running play. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah I yeah, remember that, that play. Yeah, that was a running play because he threw behind. Well, listen, I just want to point out Wentz. A lot of people have said in the last day or two that Wentz has looked like his 2017 form, which through game one, I don't necessarily agree with. I feel like in the first half, he looked like. A rookie who I've never seen play before, and in the second half, if you take away those two bombs to Deshaun, uh, you're looking at one touchdown pass, and you're looking at maybe 200 yards passing, which is not Carson Wentz like. Hey Max, this isn't fantasy. Yeah, you can't why, just take why, away we, why are we taking why are we away taking away touchdowns? touchdowns? I'm just saying the stat line gets blown up a little bit. Look at that it's big stat line: 300 plus passing yards. You're looking at three passing touchdowns, and then arguably you could say the fourth touchdown could have been a pass, could have been a run. Obviously, it was a run, but. You could look at it either way, and it would have been four touchdowns. But I'm just saying, the Atlanta Falcons, even though they didn't play well in week one, they're a whole different team than the Washington Redskins. They're at home. They're home opener. We're primetime Sunday Night Football. Oh, easily. Um, I'm not saying Watson's going to play poorly, but if that defense keeps playing like the way they did in week one, we're well, going to struggle a little well, bit. But let's talk about these halftime adjustments, man. Like The simple fact that everybody on all aspects of the game was able to just flip that lid you know, after halftime. And, you know, that's that's the one thing that championship teams do. 
They're able to make adjustments at halftime. They're able to change what hasn't been working and be able to go out in the second half and execute. But I can tell you right now, it was a couple of cussing out. There's some cussing out in the locker room. I can definitely yeah. guarantee that. Deshaun can... Jackson was there talking to the Pull team. Pull your head out of your ass! That, that's Trying exactly what's being said, though. Nice. I'm just saying. We're going backward, right, damn let's, it. Let's go. Let's talk about week one injuries. Tyreek Hill has an injured clavicle. Mm -hmm. And... Back to the clavicle, Nick Foles broke his. Mm -hmm. Man. And he seems to be out for a while. Yeah, At least, maybe, what, nine weeks? <laughs> oh, no! There goes my uh, Nick Foles for MVP campaign. Mm -hmm. That's not true! <laughs> Look, says the guy who picked him in fantasy. Eric hey. Weddle <laughs> had a head laceration. Yeah, I saw that. It was really bad. Yeah, that Jeez. was nasty. Talk about these new helmets and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, all I'm yeah. Joe Mixon suffered a right angle injury. Ankle injury. Angle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, Mike Williams has a knee injury. So mm. there's there's a lot of there's a lot of injuries going on week one, and that's never what you want to see. A player getting ready to play the whole season and then injuring in the first couple quarters of the first week. Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Hill, that didn't look good. I think he had to go to the hospital, didn't he? Right. Yeah, he had they to go took to, him the right to the hospital. Now they're Man. saying he's going to be out for some, t maybe about maybe four to six weeks with that knee injury. And Patty Mahomes got hurt too. He hurt his ankle. He did. He uh, did. Not he as serious, but yeah, he was limping off the field. You know, my my father's team, the Chiefs. He's definitely not one hundred percent. No, he's not. No, he's not. And that's a scare. That's that's the thing. Like he was, and he still went out and still did Patty Mahomes things. Like, that's the scary part with Patrick Mahomes, man. Like, I, I really do think the sky's the limit for him. Do I think, you know, there's times where he gets overhyped a little bit only because, you know, this is only his second year being a starter and playing. But I do think the sky's the limit for him. Seriously. Patrick Mahomes is going to be a, a, oh my, oh, yeah. a dynamite quarterback oh, yeah. in this he league. He had the fifth come. most passing yards. You know who had the most passing yards week one? And who's going in week two with the most <sighs> passing yards? Dak. Which quarterback? Was it Dak? Lamar? I'm telling you, you Lamar? probably wouldn't expect this. Lamar? No. Mariota? Mm -mm, it's, not, it's not Lamar. Dandy Andy. Andy Dalton, 418 know. yards. Wait, what? Yeah. Did I missed that. He was 35 for 51, and usually when you throw the ball 51 times, it doesn't really end well, and it didn't. They lost. But. Yeah. That was actually a pretty uh, good game, close. They only lost by one, 21-20 was the final. And Joe Mixon got hurt, plus he was playing without A.J. Green. Um, I'll give the Bengals credit for hanging in there. Dang. On the road against a tough Seattle team. I Dak tell you. Prescott, 405 yards. Yeah, Matthew but, Stafford, 385. Yeah. Case Keenum, 380. Patrick Mahomes, three seventy three. Dak had all day to throw in that back pocket, in, in the pocket back there. Oh, by the way, Max, I want your opinion on this. Back to the Eagles game. Mm -hmm. Okay, first off, they they messed up the spread. All right, that last touchdown where they just played that stupid dog on pre and defense. Please tell me. Yeah, but you know, but you know, you can't get mad at that because what do you, mean you can't get mad at that? Because the game, the game was 15. over. The game was over. <laughs> no, they were playing not to lose. You do not do that in the NFL. When See, you have you your, got, they gave him you a fourth and fifteen. Expect it. You Max, gotta expect it. Max. That's, that's what Schwartz does. You gotta expect it at this point. You that's get, the problem. You can get frustrated okay, all you want, but when, the, the the fact of the matter is that that's not going to change. That's how Schwartz likes to run his defense. That's the problem, Max. In the NFL, when you have your foot on somebody's throat, you do not let up the pressure. You keep squishing and crushing the windpipe of the team do until you, there is nothing left. Do you want Schwartz fired? Uh, yes, he, he, said that he, he called, he called you for his head that, before he got do, here. Do you believe? What I don't this necessarily. After, after week one with a one and zero record, I think that's a little egregious. But yeah, but one prevent defense he play. Just, he and just, it wasn't just one. The game was over. It did that, so what? I mean, it's not a Super Bowl winning mentality. No, it's, it's supposed not. to be. Uh, quote unquote, uh, the way to stop them, no matter what, you know, you give up anything in front, and obviously that never works out. I, I no, like we all remember the Tennessee because game the last team year. Team can't tackle. <laughs> that is true. It does not work. Okay? First off, no, I'm not okay. okay. First off, to allow so many yards. First off, so that inflates stats, like Case Keenum throwing for 380 yards. That's inflated at this point because we know exactly what happened. And then on top of that, to allow all those double on yards cheaply, I'm just saying, cheap yards that you could have stopped by playing an actual defense. That's all I'm saying, Max. That's all I'm saying. I understand your frustration, but at the end of the day, we got the W. That's not... <laughs> See, I knew he was going to say that. I knew he was going to come in and have this 32, mentality. 32-27. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he was going to come in and have this mentality. Listen, 
to be honest with you, th this first Eagles game and leading, everything leading up to it really did not get me hyped up enough because I knew that we were going to win the football game. We're playing the Redskins. <laughs> this game upcoming this weekend, Sunday Night Football, Matt Ryan against Carson Wentz. This is a game where, okay, I'll get up for it because we <laughs> honestly have a shot to, to you know, really go 2-0 and here. And then what do we get, the Lions? Yep. That yep. should be hopefully a win. So if we can get this one. Then, then we not to overlook the lines, but again, then we have that uh, the Green Bay week four on the road. Yeah, well, guess what? Matt yeah, Ryan. I'll be there. Short I'll be there two. at Lambeau Field. What? Wow. Yeah. So, wow. All right. And Man, then after legendary. the Packers, we have the Jets. Then back to the Vikings, the Cowboys, Bills, and Bears. But we and have, then we have the bye. Let me tell you something. All right, Matt Ryan looked like a rookie quarterback on Sunday. All right, he he absolutely yeah, was. He didn't play up, well. He was absolutely stinking up the joint. But do you know why? Because that Viking defense was on top of their receivers. All right, we don't do that. We don't have Matt Ryan is going to light this Julio defense Jones. up like a Christmas tree. I mean. I don't disagree. They're going to be frustrated. Because... They're going to be coming out, and they're at home. They exactly. got blown out week one. Exactly. We, we could. Uh... Julio Jones always does great against the Eagles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. We and could... who, who's going to cover Julio? Nobody. Mm. Yeah, you can't. Really. Hopefully, someone. <laughs> mm. Can't even cover their mouths when they call. Oh, man. Uh, that was a, that was a good one. Yeah. One player we should be. I'm not putting dedicating up this whole too much show to. It's too much. Okay. Is Antonio Brown. Okay, Tanner, screw you for talking that into existence. I'm going to do no, this. I'm gonna Tanner, this is big news. This is big news. I'm going to do that to you. During the offseason, he signed to the Raiders after what seemed like a TV show with the kind of drama that was going on. Literally with a him. TV show, Hard Knocks, right? Yeah, with mm. him and the Steelers, though, even before Hard Knocks. And then he gets on the Raiders, and he's not playing. His foot is frostbitten. Um, that is blasphemous. He doesn't want to play with these helmets. He's not paying cooks. He's just doing everything he can just to not play. And he didn't play one snap, not preseason, which I don't blame them. They wouldn't play no. Antonio around preseason. No. But he barely showed up to practice with his teammates. Um, just n not one single snap. And then he gets released what he wanted to do probably this whole time. I, I, I doubt mean, he actually saw, wanted to play for the Raiders. You saw how he Who rejoiced. Does? It's stupid. Antonio Brown. Uh, no, he, he didn't want to play with the Raiders. No, who no. does want to play for the Raiders? Right. Does the Raiders. Oh. maybe maybe oh. yeah. Oh, oh. Give me a green, maybe just card right slot. Spider I, I, I missed banana. I, I I did not read your question right. Sorry, uh. Tanner. What happened after t Ant Antonio Brown? You know, celebrated his release. Well, listen to this. The Patriots tried to trade for Antonio Brown in March, but the Steelers didn't want to trade to a rival. So instead of having to give up a pick or anything, Patriots get him for free now. Well, not for free, but it's not giving outbreak. up anything. And so, basically, the Raiders just rented Antonio Brown for, what was it, a third and fifth round pick? Yes. Yep. And now they don't have Antonio Brown. And I remember, which one of you idiots said that y'all wanted him here? I think it was Chris. It might I, Chris. I said it I don't know. Cheap. I don't know if we, we all wanted, wanted him here. We him. just speculated at the possibility of him you know, becoming an eagle. I wouldn't have even speculated because of the fact that it, his antics were starting to really rub me the wrong way. You know way. that he's going to go to New England and, and be a dominant player again, and he's going to have well, no like problems Randy Moss. because it's the Patriots. And that's the dog one problem. Now you just... No, no, this God. whole situation smells because... It does It, it seems as if Antonio Brown and the Patriots knew this all along. Oh, yeah. Happen. Yeah, I believe there was some speculation behind the scenes, and I think this needs to be investigated. Thoroughly. I mean, hey, I can I can picture that phone call. Robert Kraft calling him. Hey, uh, just be a pain in the ass. Just uh, do everything. Oh, you get know what, he, man? He reached out to social media for advice. It's to, it's on how it's he so created from it's team. smart though. If you're Antonio Brown in his position, you know, I feel this all goes back to the players have the leverage in every situation because the GMs and the owners, right? If that player is not happy, they don't want the player out there if the player is not going to be fully invested in this team. You know, we look at back at Anthony Davis a couple weeks, maybe a couple months ago at this point. He's he wants out of New Orleans, right? And and the guys, you're on the contract, right? Same thing with Zeke holding out. They need to pay, they they need to have these players on the on the field on the court, etc. Because one, they need to win football games. Agreed. Their fan base is, needs to stay involved. If Agreed. they don't have their best players, they they might tune out, especially if they're <laughs> losing a lot. So this this the players have have the leverage in, in majority of situations, and this is another example of that right here. And I, 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 I do agree with that, but it, the, the Antonio Brown situation just, it smells. It's, it yeah. smells horrible. 
and I need this investigated because I do believe that there was some tampering involved. <laughs> I, I I do. In the back of my come on, it's the Patriots we're talking about here. All right, there, there was definitely some tampering involved. Exactly, it's the Patriots. They'll get away with it. And who's stopping this Patriots team? Because maybe a few weeks ago, I would have said the Chiefs have a real good chance. No. But now, with Antonio Brown. Oh, and guess who we play after the stinking bye? The New England Patriots. They are going to tear us apart. The same, even okay. worse than they okay. did in the Super Bowl. Hey, you never know. They, uh, Jim Schwartz might change something. We have home. two weeks to prepare for him, and we're at home. You never know. Yeah. yeah. You, who's going to stop Antonio Brown? Uh, name a name a corner right now. Uh, okay, moving on. Sydney Jones. <laughs> okay, moving on. Who's gonna stop Josh Gordon? Uh, Any takers? Sydney Jones. <laughs> Who's gonna stop Julian Edelman? Sydney Jones. Just saying. Come on. All right, all right. So you, you got a good point there. <laughs> I'm, I'm, listen, I hate to be a Debbie Downer. I really do. But this defense does not inspire me. On paper, me the Patriots are probably better than us now that they have Antonio Brown yeah. and Julian Edelman's there. And yeah. You know what? I don't know where I'm going with this. I think the Patriots are better. So um, <laughs> let me take over. And can we also just listen to the Patriots' schedule? What's the problem now? Oh, so they ruin the Steelers week one. Then they go, they go to Miami to play those Dolphins who the players don't even want to be on the team anymore. <laughs> and then they play the Jets, who... Are better this season, but it's it's the Jets. They just lost to the Bills at home in Week One. And then the Come Patriots, back. after playing the Jets, they play the Bills, then the Redskins, then the Giants, then the Jets, then the Browns, Ravens, then us, the Cowboys, Texans. Then their their schedule gets hard with the Chiefs I mean, and the Texans. Actually, I mean, I mean maybe that Ravens defense. Then back can get to them. the Bengals, the Bills. Where do the they Dolphins. play? The, where do they play the Bengals at? Is that in Cincinnati? Um, really, yes. It really doesn't it, matter. It, it doesn't matter. Dude, yeah. it really doesn't. Dude, I, it, it, really it really doesn't matter. I heard two games in that schedule that might make them sweat a little they bit. They could maybe lose <laughs> one or two games this there's whole a, season. There's, there's a handful of teams in there. I'll, I'll point out one. How'd they get we, such an easy schedule? We don't know how. Because they're the stinking Patriots. Well, they also play in the worst division in football. Yeah, that is true. It, you're very true. The AFC East. The worst division in football. And then we have two of the worst teams, the Giants and the Redskins. Uh, yeah. Add them to the list. And we and still the, got a scrap with the Cowboys. We, yeah. don't, we don't know how the Browns could we we know what they did in week one, but we don't know what they're going to or how they're going to perform in the upcoming weeks. They're and then gonna they're going to play. You know, you expect them to play better. And they got to play the Cowboys. They got to play us. They got to play the Texans and Chiefs. So there's tough games on the schedule. But at the end of the day, listen, they're going back to the Super Bowl. And it's just a matter of what team, <laughs> what team in the NFC wants to stop them. You know, the Saints, I thought last night the Texans played better, better football than the Saints did. They and did. the Saints. You know, escaped with a win. Deshaun Watson did everything he could. Yeah, he did. Um, I even he was laughing on the sidelines with like thirty seconds left. Like, I finally won this. Like, I got this team. He had the Saints come back, came back, and then Watson's like, I got this team in, in position to win. And all of a sudden, the field goal happened. So, I think the Texans are going to be a, a, a tough team. Um, and and this and the Saints to to go back to the NFC. I think they're going to have a shot. We're going to have a shot. I mean, the Eagles, the Rams, you can't count them out. Yep. The Cowboys. I mean, look at them in Week One. Dak just. What did he throw for over 400 yards and he yeah, had all day? I know he's playing yeah, the Giants, but, yeah, we're, but we're playing the Redskins, yeah. you know? So it, it goes both ways. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That You really won't be able to judge, you know, how good a team really is until they actually start competing against one another. That's that's the only way you're going to be able to tell. I mean, we already said from the beginning that this Cowboys offense was dynamic just by itself. But with, you know, Zeke back in the fold and with his new outrageous $90 million contract with $50 million of it being guaranteed – that just makes their offense a whole lot more problematic. I don't see the Rams getting back to the Super Bowl. I think that I'm, and I think what, not just watching the Cowboys Week One. I thought ahead, before then, especially when they got Zeke back, that they were a contender um, with us as well in the fold. Uh, but but again, listen, there's there's multiple teams in the NFC that can get to the Super Bowl, but I don't think there's anybody. Else. I mean, Tyreek Hill's gone for weeks now. I thought the Chiefs might make give the Patriots a shot, you know, a run mm -hmm. for their money. But now that Hill's gone. Uh, their defense isn't great, you know. I think the Patriots. That thing is uh, that's wide open. Yeah. I would I would say they throw the Texans, but they just got beat last night by the Saints. You know, I know it's a tough road game, but um, there's really nobody in the AFC that really compares to New England. I mean, they really just beat down the. Pa I mean, listen, the Patriots just wanted to get a field goal, or, or the Steelers just wanted to get a field goal on the board just to not get shut out. They lost okay. thirty-three to three. I mean, it was embarrassing. But I just feel like the the Saints. You can't count out Drew Brees, and nope. I feel like in order for an NFC team to win, they need to have a quarterback that has experience, one, and and can compete with Tom Brady. You know, because yep. uh, I know Wentz can do it. 
and I feel like I feel confident. But again, like look at other teams in the NFC. You want to throw Dak and the Cowboys against Brady in the Super Bowl? No, that, that, no, that's not going to. It, it really might come down to. Do, it really might come down I to mean, the Saints and, and maybe us. You know, I mean, the Bears look. Bad in week one. It was a bad week one. I Aaron started Ro- Mitch Trubisky, yeah. too. I'm pretty mm. upset about that. Aaron Rodgers didn't put up 30, 40 points like you would expect. I know it's the Bears' defense. Yeah, I was again, about to but... say, yeah, that Bears' defense was dominant. Yeah. I mean, I'm jealous of I, that defense. I kind of chuckled. I mean, I chuckled at the fact when you were like, yeah, the Patriots are going to the Super Bowl again. But yeah, I mean, who's going to compete with them? If I'm being what, honest, the Chargers? I'm if I'm being honest, no. like. <laughs> The only way you can beat the Patriots is by throwing their game right back at them. Is that not what we did? That's pretty in much twenty seventeen. That's can, pretty much what you're happened. only going to be able to outscore them. You have that's to go, all you can do. It's like the Warriors. Yeah, you yeah. outscore them. You yeah. have to go toe to toe. That's all you can do. So, if if a offense is hot as high as the Eagles was in twenty seventeen, maybe it can be done. It just man, it, it just makes me nauseous thinking that the Patriots will freaking win. Yeah, yeah. Which, which other. AFC teams, what are we thinking? Just the Chiefs and the Chargers? Chiefs? I think the Texans got a Texans shot. Probably. Yeah, the Texans have a shot. Okay. I said the Texans have a shot. I, I think the Texans if, have a better shot than the than the Chargers. Honestly. Yeah, I, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Because they, they, they went into overtime against the Colts. No, don't get me wrong. That Man, that, that Colts team was, man, they were gritty. If, if they Andrew came Luck, back in overtime. If Andrew Luck stuck around. Yeah, if Andrew Luck stuck around, I think they would have won that game. But the fact that they were able to come back with, you know, just that, just the nucleus that they have, I think that's really impressive. But it did take overtime to beat them. So, no, I'm not very The Browns had so much hype coming into the season. Man. And you, you watched yesterday's <laughs> mm. or two days ago's game. And I feel, um, obviously, your opinion may. I feel change. sorry for a Cleveland fan. And, and on the other hand, the flip side of that, the Ravens, I can't really judge them either because they played Miami, who's the equivalent to yeah, like but a they, D2 er- college team. Yeah, but everybody called Lamar Jackson a, a running back quarterback. Ravens are yeah. the only team in the AFC North that won. Mm. Right. Now. And Lamar, I don't, I get it. He played very, very well. But again, do you really want him going up against? Tom? Like, just picture that matchup: Lamar Jackson versus. I don't know, think. I don't think necessarily he's ready yet, but. I said in the offseason that I think Lamar Jackson is a quarterback that everybody needs to look out for because if he develops that accuracy can't and argue. he learns how to read the field, mm-hmm. he's going to be a right-handed Mike Vick. I called it. I can't argue that the way he's performed. I, I mean, just on the ground with his legs, and I didn't know his arm was that good. Yes. You oh, know? Yeah. He, he came into the NFL with a huge Hollywood arm. Brown had a couple of uh, big-time deep balls. I'm picking him up in fantasy. <laughs> he's a free agent. I think uh, no, Lamar's going to uh, surprise some people this year. <laughs> Yeah, I already have I, him on the waiver wire, buddy. I, I, I totally did not expect Lamar Jackson to have the game he did. But again, I didn't expect the Dolphins. Well, I didn't really know much because, you know, the Dolphins really were pretty quiet through training camp and everything like that. They got a new head coach, but no really uh, talented playmakers. So I didn't really know how they were going to perform. You know, you expect them to not play well, but I didn't know if they are going to get killed by that much, especially at home. Yeah, just... Yeah, yeah, like, and I said, and I said it. Like everybody kept disrespecting Lamar Jackson. Everybody kept saying, "Oh, he's just this, he's just this athlete quarterback." And I'm like, "No, he he can he can throw the ball. He can play the quarterback position. He's just going to need development, and it's coming to fruition. He's going to be a problem in the future. Him along with Mahomes, along with Wentz, along with Watson." That's going to be a core nucleus. That's a solid of quarterbacks, future of quarterbacks. Future quarterbacks in the NFL. You know, I was watching this the, uh, the Broncos and the Raiders game last night, and I was watching this Broncos team. They lost 24-16. But I was looking at the team as a whole, right? They got a great defense. They got two good running backs in Freeman and Lindsey. They got some mm-hmm. playmakers on the outside. Cortland Sutton had seven catches over 100 yards. Emmanuel Sanders coming back off the Achilles. He, he had a touchdown, five catches for 80-plus yards. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking to myself, what the hell's wrong with this team? They got playmakers all over. They're missing and then, a quarterback. And then you look at the quarterback position in Joe Flacco. You know, the guy, first of all, he's, he's not mobile, right? And no. he holds the ball forever. He does. I mean, I was sitting and watch, I was watching the game last night. I'm just like, throw the ball. I'm yelling at my TV like, God damn, <laughs> Flacco, think, throw the football. But think about it. That's always been his problem. He's always been one of those quarterbacks to hold on to the football because, let's be honest, He's just a quarterback with a big arm. His accuracy is deeper than it is his short and rated re- accuracy. They rarely I don't I get I get it. He's a veteran, so John Elway, he wants after the past couple seasons of them having a bunch of different guys in there, it really right. didn't pan out. He wanted some stability. But Flacco, I, I don't he's I don't think he's the answer back then. I was about to say, yeah, they need to I hope they really um, search internally and, and realize that they they need to draft a quarterback. The they're, Raiders, they're so bad at drafting quarterbacks. Though. Yeah, they are. They haven't yeah. had any success, John Elway. You would expect them to. But you're not. But 
you're not going to get a good quarterback to come through the wire like that. Good quarterbacks don't hit free agency. Here's the way. problem. The, the Denver Broncos are too talented of a team to be like the second overall pick because of the talent they have around them. You know, and if they just true. tank like the Dolphins are, you, then you you know, you know get like a Justin Herbert or Tua Tagovailoa coming out next year. But <laughs> at, this end of the, at the end of the day, there's just too much talent on the team to, to really have that high – draft pick. And It'll be a middle of the pack. And that's very true, but it's going to be also hard for you to acquire a quarterback via trade because you're going to have to give up No one so gives up quarterbacks. Much. Exactly. Exactly. So what are the, what can the Broncos do? Trade up. they got to trade up in the draft. You're going to have to give Listen, up some assets. The 11th overall pick in 2006, the Broncos select Jay Cutler. Then it kind of just yeah. goes it goes downhill with a Tim, a Tim Tebow in 2010. Mm-hmm. Um, Paxton Lynch in 2016. Yeah, he never panned out. No, no. Oh, man. Tebow stinks. <laughs> Again, you, I, I just remind myself that Blake Bortles got drafted fourth overall. <laughs> and it just has me scratching my you head know, still man. to this day. Yeah, you know, but again, you know, you wait how later on in the draft, you can get like Dak Prescott, fourth round pick. Look how he turned out so far. Pretty good for the Cowboys. What? So yeah, yeah, you never know who you could find. You never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you guys hate the Cowboys? <laughs> you guys hate the Cowboys or so, something? Hey, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, pretty um, much. Do you I not? think hate is a weak word to use <laughs> that we feel against the Cowboys. Despise. <laughs> now, guys, we're leaving Week One behind us. Let's look ahead to Week Two with Atlanta. Now we obviously know what the big, big problem is, but. Mm. Well, what else are you worried about? <laughs> well, I'm worried about that dome. I know the Falcons play a lot better at home than they do on the road. They do, yeah. And that's and that's another yes, that's another scary thing. Um, do, does it look like the offense has finally clicked? Yes, but this is a different defense that you're going up against. This Falcons defense, you know, they're not big and bulky. They're smaller, but they're more speedy. So the the intermediate to deep passes won't be there all the time like they were against the Redskins. That's true. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to rely heavy on that run game. And use the size of your receivers. Use Alshon. Use, use the size Ertz, of your receivers. You know? Use the size of your offensive linemen to push the line of scrimmage and dominate the line of scrimmage up front immediately. Make your presence known within the first couple plays up front. Destroy their defensive line. I think they're going to have to run the football a little bit more in this Ex- game, and that's exactly what I was about to say. Do you they're get Miles Sanders? What do you? How do you? Now I don't think you break the snap count down by, from the running back position the same you did in Week One. Like, no. How would you break that? Would you? Would you kind of have a little bit more even between Sanders and Howard? Or would you have Sanders carry the bulk of it and think, maybe not and maybe fade Sproles and give? I think this game you fade Sproles out and you. Dominate with Jordan Howard. So you think Howard gets a majority of the carries? I, he should. And just I want him to. Right off the gut? Yes. You okay. have to You have to play smash mouth football against this Falcons defense. You cannot go finesse with them. You can't be cute running outside plays, outside the tackle. They're too fast for that. They're going to catch up to you. They play 11 hats on a ball football. Everybody goes to the ball carrier. You're going to have to smack them up front. You don't have a choice. Well, the Dominate is, them up front. Our lines are, for the most part, uh, one of the best on both sides of the ball in the league. I know we just lost Jackson, which is going to hurt. But yeah. again, we got Timmy Jernigan in there. He's, he he's does he ever? He was on that the Super Bowl winning team, yeah, wasn't he? Was, twenty seventeen. Yeah, so he's got cool. a, Jernigan. Timmy Jernigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah he was a, yeah, so he's, he's got a ring. So an experience in the defense. Uh, so uh, I think we'll win up front. And um, I'm looking at the Vegas odds now for that game. Uh-oh. Um, they got him. Wow, they're not even giving Atlanta home field advantage. They're calling it a pick 'em. And I even seen seen some picks where they have. The Eagles favor by minus one. Wow. Jeez. They are, they have no confidence in this Atlanta team at Jeez, all. That, that line really tells you all you need to need to know. It I does. Mean, they really expect But the, the one thing, but the one weakness that we have on our on the Eagles defense is that dog on secondary. Okay, Calvin Ridley and yeah. Julio Jones scare the crap out of me. I was about to I was about to say, because um, you know, Let's looking at this Eagles defense, I you can cl- it almost looks like a freaking checkerboard. You can see w- all the openings. There are so many openings, too. Yes. And, you know, I, you can easily pick apart that defense when it comes to— you, all you got to do is just 10 yards at a time. Yes. All they really need to do it's, is tackle, right? Because the, the reason they give up these big plays is they, they miss at the point of attack, and they just let them run down the field. Tackling yeah. is the second biggest problem on the defense. The, the first biggest problem is they play too doggone far off the ball. And because they play too doggone far off the ball, that opens up the comeback route. That opens up the curl route. That opens up that slant route. That, heck, that, and then when you hit them enough with enough slants, that opens up the sluggle route. Where it looks like it's a slant 
and then the receiver goes on a nine route, a complete out route, and then guess what? These corners are going to bite every single time because that's what they've proven to do. Yeah. yeah. These corners got to play up. We're, this, they, they don't trust their speed. That's, but that's the thing. They may not trust their speed, but if you put your hands on the receiver at the line of scrimmage, if you press them, get them off of their game, you slow down that receiver from doing what he's supposed to do, and you're able to keep up with him, and you shut him down. These teams in the NFL know that to attack this defense of the Philadelphia Eagles, all you got to do is nickel and dime them up the field because their coverage team sucks. Would you go zone then, or would you kind of double Julio and play man the rest of the way? What you need to do, you need to shadow Julio Jones. You need to shadow him like a shadow would I feel follow like Matt, you on a summer day in the sun. I feel like Matt Ryan would pick a part of the zone. But like you said, who's going to do that? You need to place a safety over the top in a corner or a linebacker. You can't have Malcolm Julio. do it because Malcolm takes care of the bigger, bulkier, tight end type players like Austin Hooper. So I think you're going to have to have McLeod back there and have whoever you have the most confidence in from a corner position, You know, have him go man, man to man and then have shadow coverage. It, I, yes, that's exactly what needs to happen. That is exactly what needs to happen because otherwise you're not going to be very successful. No. These these wide receivers are going to light you up, and you are going to make you are literally going to make Matt Ryan tear your defense apart. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Lo- lo- looking at the stats of the Falcons game week one, they only ran the ball 14 times. Well, 15, but one of the one of the plays was a minus. Uh, so. I don't really think you got to worry about their running game, but then again, De- Devontae Freeman is a solid running back. Uh, so, like mm-hmm. you said, I think I really think that Matt Ryan will pick apart this defense because it just seems like the same story. Because mm-hmm. I, I just remember, um, I just remember Eli Manning just easily picking apart this defense yep. multiple times. And we all know Eli's not the same Eli from years ago. Eli stinks at this point. Who? He's a shadow of his former self. Oh yeah. All right, that's why they drafted Daniel Jones. And so I'm still not getting on that high train either. <laughs> All right, what else we got? Any other topics, Chris, you want to bring up? Uh, well, the Phillies. No, are... there's no other sports team. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, oh, I got to bring this up. So now all of a sudden, now you guys want to listen to me. Now all of a sudden, oh, no, the Phillies are done. No, no, y'all swim. Y'all swim in the ocean on y'all own. Hey, I, I already been got my lifeboat. You're going to let me drown out here? Yeah, I'm letting you drown. <laughs> you on your own. Because I told you to, to abandon ship a long time ago. But no. You got it now. Here's, the, here's the problem. The wild card race will never be out of it because, one, how many teams are in the in the race, I mean, obviously, right now. We're now it's three stupid. games out of it. Oh, it's over. No, it's yeah. over for us. Yeah. There's just I too many teams there. It. But. Uh, last night, I just the, the attendance. People they sold twenty five thousand tickets and only seventeen thousand showed up. So that tells me that people had tickets an and outrage. didn't even go. I mean, for a team that's two games out of a wild card spot in September, playing probably their biggest or one of their biggest rivals, the Atlanta Braves, a great team in the Atlanta Braves, uh, mind you. Um, so I was just surprised <laughs> at the fact that only seventeen thousand showed up it was like a Sixers game last night. Yep. <coughs> See. But no, y'all kept having, holding out hope for the Phillies. Y'all kept saying, oh, this team is going to come back. Max wants a doggone playoff T-shirt. It's not going to happen. Here's, I, here's I, the, where the problem comes in, Chris. <laughs> here's where the problem comes in. We look towards next season at this point, and it's not that bright because we don't have any pitching. Nope. You can't. Nope. And like I said before, I guess there's no luxury tax in baseball, so you can go out and buy whoever you want. But do you really want to be going to overpay like – Three starting pitchers just to bring them in for a year or two? I if mean, want, preferably not. If, if you want this team to be competitive, you ain't got much of a choice. Because the Braves just drafted so much better, and their young core is locked up for years to come. Ozzy Albies is locked up. Ronald Acuna Jr. is locked up. They have Freddie, even Freddie Freeman. Donaldson only signed a one-year contract, but the way he's playing, they'll probably re-sign him. I mean, he's getting up there in age. But. It doesn't matter. Look at the numbers. He just hit a three-run bomb last night to the opposite field. He looked like he was in his prime. Look, I know. I know. He brought you the rain to Philadelphia. The it's bringer been, of rain. It's been eight years since we made the playoffs. Yeah, well. Man, it's going to have to wait another one because yeah. there's yeah. too many teams. The Diamondbacks are ahead of it. Who else? The Cubs, obviously. The D-backs. The, 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 the Brewers. Brewers. The Brewers, yeah. And the, and the, the Mets only, are right behind the us. Yeah, the, the only Mets. teams are 
A team that was dead in the beginning of the season, halfway yeah. through, yeah. actually, they were just. They going. had the pitching. That's the reason they kept them in it. I mean, mm-hmm. only the Brewers and the Diamondbacks. See, who are the wild card teams? And you're obviously the Nationals. Do you think the Cubs get that second wild card? Or is there a team that's you know, the D backs only a game, game and a half out? Two and a half. I say the Cubs. Two, oh, they're two and a half now. Two and a half. Oh, they must have lost last night. I say the Cubs. Cubs. Yeah, it's, just, it's, the, it's gotta be the Cubs. Javier Baez is out for the rest of the regular season. I'm, look. I didn't know that, I'll be honest. Look, at this <laughs> look at this point, I don't care. I got football to break down, so I don't have to worry about an irrelevant team at this point. <laughs> All right, what are you looking forward to, the, uh, the Thursday night game? Tampa Bay at Carolina? Ah, oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Nah. Not a big Cam Newton fan. Nah, 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 nah. Now, listen, Tampa Bay, uh, after week one, Jameis Winston threw two pick sixes. So uh, maybe he you can turn it around. Gonna happen. James Winston is just not. He has, he has too many playmakers he's, around him to be this bad, though. He's got Mike Evans. He's got Chris Godwin and OJ Howard. He's got oh Ronald Jones, who everybody expected him to play poorly this year. He's, hell, he played James pretty Winston? well in Week One. Is it too soon to declare James Winston a bust? Mm. I think we need to give the him first him. overall pick. I Come think on. we need to give him a couple more weeks, but he's approaching that Vince Young territory at this point. Marcus Mariota is better he, than him. He, he, uh, would you I say? I mean, I'll agree with that. I would say I'd he was the that. second overall pick. It's yeah. hard to argue the way he's performed through his first, you know, few was it four or five years. He in the just league doesn't now. look like he's in shape either. I was watching him. He's eating pre-season. too many W's. Man. His decision making is yeah. really uh, questionable. What's he no. doing now? He's eating too many W's. How many chances are they going to give him? They they can't bring Ryan Who else they got? get? Back who in. else they got? That's the problem. And now he's got a quarterback guru as a coach who really should be helping him out. I mean, he was competing with Ryan Fitzpatrick for a starting job this last is, season. This is what I brought up earlier. And he was benched the for him. There's talent on that team. They don't have a quarterback to lead them. And there's multiple teams in the league that are like that. They need to get a quarterback. And again, mm-hmm. like I said, they don't just fall off the trees. But there's nope. a couple of good ones going to come out this year, and who are going to be the two lucky teams to get those two guys, you know? I agree, man. I mean, if Tampa finds out early enough in this season that they're not going to be competitive, do they just tank and maybe try to get a high draft pick to get one of those guys? Man, it's hard It's hard not to argue that, man. But, man, sometimes Winston, man, he'll throw passes, and I'll just sit there literally and just be like, what the f- is that? Like, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just saying. But other times he'll throw for like 430 yards and four touchdowns. So it's it's just the inconsistency. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's so inconsistent. He it's, is. He sounds it's hard like, to watch. He sounds him like play. the Jake Arrieta football. Yeah. <laughs> Who do the Buccaneers have? Uh, what do the Buccaneers have to look forward to? They they got Nadama Kongsu. Is that the biggest move they made? I think yeah, so. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty Her much. defense isn't horrible. Yeah. I mean, I, I would I would call it uh, you know middle of the pack, kind of better than average ish. You know. So. I mean, I think that's a little egregious. You think so? I, I mean. Mm-hmm. I mean, just remember better. Who, just remember who watches tape. Better. Remember who watches tape. Okay. I'll tell you who looked old on Sunday. Brandon Graham. He, he, he that, looked old. Mm-hmm. He looked his slow. name was still being talked about though. Slow and old. That's what he I looked mean, like. He still has the hustle, but he. Uh, Derek Barnett. I'll tell you what. He played the majority of the snaps. <laughs> but Derek. Now Derek Barnett did good. I don't understand why they deactivated Deshaun Hall. I feel as though he played better than Josh Sweat. In the the pass rushers need to be dominant, big, physical, quick. You need to have super athleticism to that's, have a good pass rusher. That's the thing. Young. Though. They can't be old as hell. They can't be 31 plus. But that's the thing that you're relying on this defensive line to be dominant. I mean, they have to come out like with their heads on fire. That's the thing. You're relying on them to do that every week to cover up the weaknesses. Malik Jackson is going to hurt the more I think about it. I well, mean, we, I, he, yeah. Jim Schwartz relies yeah. on those rotations. But man, I think with Tim help. Jernigan, I think we'll be fine. I think right. we'll be fine for a temporarily for I hope so because he's got experience in the defense. But the problem is we don't have any more rotations to go to. There's nobody left after him. Yeah. That's so he's gonna have to play a lot of snaps. Yeah, that's the only thing. All, All right. right. All, All right, right, y'all. Man. If we if y'all missed any of this episode, you can always go to Philly Dash Experience dot simple task dot com. We are on all major platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, and more. Tune in next week to hear the results of week two oh in boy. the NFL. <laughs> and hopefully I won't lose my head because this defense has missed tackles and missed assignments, and maybe I can be a whole lot more calmer and not lose my voice by the end of the show. All righty. Check us out on YouTube. I know you already said that. Hey. Look for us on Twitter at the Philly EXP. Yep, isn't that at it? The Philly EXP one on Twitter. You can talk back to us. Tell us how we doing. Hey man, if you want to talk football with us, we're all ears. Or call me an idiot. That means you're listening. Hey, I call you that every week. All right, whatever. I'm gonna use your mic now. <laughs> all right. <laughs>
We'll be back next Tune week. Next Are week. you kidding me? All right. See you, everyone. I am pissed off. I'm not going to tolerate your crap today. This is on phone.